Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Rugby on Freer Sports. And the United Rugby Championship is finally upon us. The Lions will be taking on Zebra tomorrow night in the first ever clash of the new competition. New year, new team, new competition, new everything to play for and a whole new environment for the uh, South African sides. And I think it's a really good thing. I've been I've been so excited to see exactly what you know the USC was going to give us. And and this is now finally time. And we've got some mouthwatering clashes to, to get us um on un, un, underway with, you know, with Leinster versus Bulls, Sharks taking on Munster, and then we've got the Stormers and the Lions taking on um the two Italian sides. And I think it will be really good to sort of see the variety across this weekend. We will be live for a number of different games. Check out the channel on the community chat for a full list of all the games we're going to be covering. Um, you're going to see some new faces on the channel and stuff like that. And obviously, I will be with you guys for a lot of the games, including this one, as my Lions team hopes to try and get things off to a winning start over in Parma in Italy. Um, the game will be played at the Stadio Sergio Lanfranchi Stadium. Kickoff will be at half past six, um, both South African standard time, as well as Italian uh, time as well. And if you look at the sides, I mean, Italy have named a side with over 300 international caps in them, um, whereas the Lions basically have two capped uh, Springbok players in their lineup. But it is about as strong as the Lions can go. A couple of the lone players have come straight into the side, into the 23, um, a couple of players back from the injury. So it's a very, it's, it's a decent Lions side. As Lions sides go, it's a better side than we saw for most of the Curry Cup. So hopefully... They can try and pitch up tomorrow and make this as competitive as possible and, and try and get um, things underway with a positive result. But don't, I mean, you know, we, I think we, we sort of have written off the Italian side so often until we saw a Benson game. And that sort of showed you the quality of the URC. So many people worried that, you know, our standard of rugby is going to slip going north because we're not going to be playing against New Zealand and the Australian sides. But... I think it's. I think it could be quite the opposite. You know, by the time we start playing Challenge Cup, you know, and and Champions Cup, you know, when we eventually sort of sort that sort of qualification out, I think overall we will probably be playing at a higher standard more regularly and against some of the best players in the world. You're going to be playing against international players week in week out, which is exactly what we need to be doing. Uh, and also, I think a large variety of styles. You know, teams from Italy will play differently to teams from Scotland who will play differently from teams from Wales who will play completely differently to teams from Ireland. So we've got all those different sort of variety of, of styles and players and, and tactics and conditions before you even go to um, France and the UK for, you know, Challenge Cup and, and Champions Cup and stuff like that. So I really do think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but if we look at the sides for the first clash, we'll start with the line side. And um, as you can see, sorry about that. Um, as we said, we, they have got about as strong as they can go. So you've got Ruan Dre in the starting line, one of the players with some Springbok caps. He will start at loose head for the Lions. Yaku Vasaki starts at hooker. Carly Sardi, who I think must be on the Bok radar, very, very solid scrummager, had a stormy season uh, for the Lions. And it's been a bit of a stalwart since making his move from um, the Stormers. He starts at tight head. The two locks will be Ruben Skouman partnered with Puma's captain, Peter Janssen van Furen, who comes into the Lions on loan and goes straight into the starting lineup. We're going to need consistency tomorrow when it comes to the lineups, when it comes to set pieces, and hopefully the experience of Peter Janssen van Furen, who's found the journey quite tough going, but has has sort of walked the hard jars, done and, and, and been there, done that. So hopefully he'll be bringing a, a calm head. But the biggest sort of boost for the Lions are the next two players, which is Jakob Creel, who is finally fit back and will make his, well, not make his return, will make his return after a long time. Um, but he's hot, he's sort of basically not played since he's come back to the Lions. Um, but he will be starting tomorrow in the number six jumper. And Vich Tuka has recovered from his injury as well. He's starting in number seven. And then Frankie Hall, no captaincy, which I think is a good decision. Let the youngster, you know, sort of sort himself out. Has kind of gone under the radar in terms of that as number eight Let's go. We've seen the stormy season of, of Pepsi Boot, Lazy, Ulrich Lowe, and Evan Ruiz. But somebody who's going to be under the radar is Frankie Horn because the Lions have sort of been struggling. And he sort of started picking up form. I thought he was very good against the British and Irish Lions. So that Lucia is probably about as exciting as, as we can get in terms of this Lions squad. In terms of players to watch, positions to watch, that Lucia is very, very solid. One of the sort of the few departments which I think the Lions are pretty well stocked. Very young in the likes of Tuka. Frankie Horn, Sanguini of the bench. There's not a lot of experience there, especially some international experience, but that's where something like Akakriel is so important. The halfback pairing will be um, Andre Warner as um, next to Jordan Hendrickson, the 20-year-old. is being back to the first choice, number 10, but we do have Eddie Fischer coming off the bench, which is nice to see. And hopefully those two, I mean, Eddie Fischer also quite young, will try and push each other. Um, and I'm very excited to see what Jordan Hendrickson can do 
on sort of the bigger stages and and overseas in different conditions. He's such a big talent as Jordan Hendricks, you know, already being sort of touted for high honors that it's going to be a very important sort of season for him. And then Rasmus Kleiner was one of the one of the sort of the shining lights in the Lions Curry Cup side, scoring lots of tries. And hopefully he'll be try, able to try and get him into space tomorrow. Berger Wendell kept in the side. He'll have Wanda Silas Similani outside him, been part of the box squad today, and he's now got the mentor in Jacques Ferry. I mean, what more could you want? For somebody who defensively people have always said that's a bit of an issue, who better to try and turn you into an international outside center than one of the best outside centers we have seen in a Springbok jersey? Um, very, very excited to see how he develops. And you could see um, in the press conference on Tuesday with these two sitting next to each other, Jacques Ferry was talking about how important Wanda Silas Similani is. And I'm really hoping that he'll be able to sort of fix the defensive um, aspects of Similani's game and sort of be able to create a bit of an all-round outside center. Jumbo Lang was a bit of a surprise pick on the wing and then EW Fuyun at full back. On the bench, PJ Buerta, Steve Satole and the youngster Asanata and Klabakanya will be the reserve front row. Rana North Nahu will come in in the, t- in the, in the second row. And then Steve Sif Sangweni, who's taken, um, you know, really took his opportunities with a couple of injuries, gave him a chance to go into the line set, um, set up, and he's be- already become quite an important figure within the squad. Uh, Morty Vandenberg, a bit of a live wire scrum half, comes, will come off the bench, as will Eddie Fushia and Devon Rousseau, who made the uh, move from the Bulls last year. Have hardly, haven't really seen him for the Lions, but he is named in, in the number 23 jump and will come off the bench. It's a pretty decent Lions side in terms of what they've got available. Um, as I say, I think we all know the side probably needs a couple more signings to really sort of make it um, a quality side. But as far as they go, lots of exciting youngsters and a lot of lot of excitement in and around the camp. You know, at the end of the day, we, we wanted probably more change. We probably wanted more signs. We wanted, probably wanted even maybe a new coach. But now it comes down to this. You've got to back Ivan Fenoy and his new coaching staff. Let's see what they can do up against this Zebra side, which boasts a lot of international players. Um, and we'll start yeah so and 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 there it is so we're looking at the side which i said has over 300 international caps for Italy. We'll start in the front row. Dan- Daniela Fischetti, uh, Fischetti is 23 years old, got 12 international caps. Um, the two props and there are Fischetti and then Matteo Nocera, um, who is 30, um, 22 years old. So um, two very young props up against quite a lot of experience in Carlo Sardi and Ru Andrea. Um, but all the experience they need comes in the form of Luca Bigi, who is um, got 37 international caps. He's actually captained Italy before. Um, in the second row, some very big boys in Matteo Nocera and David Sisi. Um, both, you know, 194 and 196 and both 120 kgs plus. So bring a lot of bulk in that sort of tight five. Um, David Sisi's got 15 caps for Italy, so one of the many sort of cap players. And if you look at this uh, loose trio, probably sort of the, um, quite a, one of the most exciting players is Maximum Banda who has 29 caps for, for Italy, the 28-year-old. Um, lots of experience he brings to the game and he is next to Jacopo Bianchi and Renato Giamarioli. Um, and, and this is the best part about the URC, isn't it? Is that we've seen some of these players, um, but we're going to start sort of being able to see some of the, maybe the next generation of Italian players. Somebody like Apollo got busy, unfortunately, we won't see for Benetton. But that type of player, those sort of caliber of players or the young Italian players coming through, we'll get to see firsthand and we'll probably have a much better all-round knowledge of, of um, the European rugby in about nine months' time when we see some of these players coming through. Um, players that we that we do know a little bit more about is the likes of Marcello Violi and then obviously Carlo Can has got over 50 caps for Italy. We know the quality he brings. He is the danger man for the Lions. Um, that halfback pairing, you know, they've played together for Italy. They've they've played against some of the best teams in the world. At the end of the day, for all people might say, oh, well, they're in, it, it, um, Italian national players. This is a side that plays the Six Nations every year. This is a side that plays against Ireland, Scotland, uh, England, France, Wales all the time. So they play against quality opposition. They've got a lot of experience, do these players. And experience can can help so much in in, um, in competitions like this. Uh, speaking of experience, Mattia Bellini brings a whole bunch of experience himself. The 27-year-old wing, um, he's got 31 international caps, also played in the seventh circuit, a very skillful player, lots of pace there as well. The uh, centers for Zebra are Oliveira, uh, sorry, Thomas Boni and Giulio Bessegni. Um Quite a lot of experience between those those two. Played a lot of caps for for Zebra. I mean, um, I has got over a hundred caps playing for Zebra, so very sort of settled in that centre pairing. On the other wing, we've got uh, Pierre Bruno, who's played Italy under twenties, the twenty five year old, and then the only. Um, Non uh, Italian player in the entire 23 is actually Junior uh, Junior Lerofi, who's got um, actual uh, has got Australian sevens experience. He's played a couple of tournaments for Australia sevens back in 2012, 13. 
um, before moving over and being part of the Zebra setup for the last couple of years. So watch out for him at fullback. Also, the same sort of thing when it comes to Sevens. Lots of skills set. Uh, well, a good set, skill set and a very nice um, step on him as well. Off the bench, there's even more international caps that can come on. Um, Oliveira Fabi- Fabiani's got... Uh, 11 caps to his name. He's also actually got some sevens experience. So, you know, for a hooker, you know, expect somebody who's got a, a decent pair of hands as well and will probably be very good at the breakdown. Um, so watch out for him. And then you've got the wealth of experience, Andrea Lovati, who's got 47 international caps for Italy. So to have something like that coming off the bench is a really, really nice position to be on. Um, and then you've got Ian Nikolai at tight head. And after that, you know, I mean, he sort of starts the, the very young bench of Zebra. 20 years old, you've got um, Andrea Zabanin, who's 21 years old as the reserve lock, over two meters tall, brings a lot of um, weight to the pack off the bench. Um, Giovanni Licatos is 24 years old. And after that, the outside backs, and Alessandro um, Fasco, Fasco is 21 years old. Antonio Rizzi is 23 years old. And then Jacopo Trula is 21 years old and already has seven caps for the Italian national side. So whilst the, um, I think you know we, we, we sort of talk about maybe the URC not being as strong as playing in the Super Rugby, and it's teams like Zebra and Benetton, which people might have sort of had a few couple of, of sort of question marks around because we don't really know what, what it's like. We've got international quality players here. And I think that regardless of the result tomorrow, it's going to be massive for somebody like a Vincent Tuka, who I think will play international rugby, to come up against some of the players that he might actually come up against when he plays international rugby. And sort of test yourself, something like a Jordan Hendrickser, to go up against an international quality fly half. He's got over 50 caps for his nation. That experience is invaluable. And I think that's going to be the best part about the United Rugby Championship. At the end of the day, for the past year, we've seen these players playing against the other provinces in like four or five different competitions, um, but it's the same player. So it'll be a nice chance to sort of play against a different style of rugby, different type of players, and in a new, new environment. Uh, let me know what your score predictions are down in the comments below. Do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Steven. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll chat to you soon.